Uh, again, as I mentioned before, this is sort of a, uh, a combination, pardon the pun, of uh, the different counting methods uh, that we can use to solve different types of problems. So it's, everything's all combined uh, together and they're all jumbled up and uh, you're gonna have to choose if it's a combination type problem or if it's a permutation type problem uh, or if there's fundamental counting principle you can use or whatever. So it's all kind of mixed up. So <clears throat> the first thing that we'll take a look at here is this investigate the math uh, problem. Okay, so it says this. A band has recorded three hit singles over its career. One of the hits went platinum. The band members selected 15 songs, including the three hits, for the set list for their upcoming concert. Okay. Now the question is, how many possible sequences for the set list are there if the band wants to open with a hit, play a hit in the middle, and then end the concert with their one platinum hit? So you can see right away that we have some restrictions here, right? There's something they want to open with, something they want to do in the middle, and something they want to end with. And then there's all the other songs that can be in really any order. So the, set, the, the question says, how many possible sequences? Now, this is a word I don't know if we've come across in some of the questions we've talked about. But sequences, a sequence is one um, item after another. So it, it includes, uh, that's the wording means uh, you, know, you want to consider a definite order. Okay, what's the sequence? There's a different sequence of the same events, right? That makes sense? So we could have, so order matters here for the songs that are um, not the hits, for sure. So you want to tackle this, and, and they've kind of laid out some questions here. So these are the types of things that you want to ask yourself uh, when you're looking at a problem like this just from scratch. So, so A, does the order of the songs matter? Well, we just kind of talked about that, right? If we're talking about definite arrangements or sequences, so you know, the first song has to be, there's a restriction there, but the next few songs, right, um, can be in any order. And we do have to count the different orders. So yes, the order matters um, in the set list. Are there any conditions? Talked about that as well, right? There's something in the, at the beginning, first one, uh, something in the middle, and then the special one at the end they want to end with. Uh, how many platinum songs do they have to choose from for the song in the 15th position? They have one, one out of 15, right? There's one platinum song, so there's really only one choice for the last position. So I don't know if you're, if you're maybe noticing this, but um, I'm thinking fundamental counting principle here right away. So I'm thinking there's a choice to be made at the beginning, there's a choice to be made at the middle, and then there's the platinum one at the end. Well, we already know, boom. There's only one for the end song. Now, you could think about all of these songs really as kind of one big group, which I'm kind of leaning towards doing. Uh, these songs right here can be in any order, and they are not the hits or the platinum song, right? So I'm just kind of, myself, I'm just kind of starting this way. Um, okay, so how many hit songs are there to choose from for the song in the first position? So how many hit songs? Two. Uh, two, okay. Now why is it not three? Because they, they said in the, in the beginning of the question that there are three hit songs. One of them is the platinum. And that one has to go at the end, so, so really good, okay? So if you think about that, let's go back to our notes here. There's one there, so there's two remaining hit songs that they can choose from for the opener. Are you guys with me here so far? Making sense? How many hit songs are left for this middle position? Then We may as well do that right away. Okay, one. Okay, very good. So um, if you, if you want to think about it this way, you could also think about it as there are two hit songs and they want to um, choose one of them, right? Doesn't really matter which one, two choose one, and uh, one choose one, but again, I, the permutations and the combinations mixture, if you can do fundamental counting principle, kind of takes care of a bit of that, so. Now, the sequence um, here, does it matter? Well, we said, yeah, it does matter. Uh, how many songs are left to go in this whole thing here? Well, you know what? I, you so could, let's see. Now, you could go, there's songs here, and there's going to be songs here. So you could count them as two separate pieces, but then, then you would have to, when you did all those permutations, you would have to consider the fact that they would be switched as well, and they could go, I don't know, you know you'd have to consider everything. So I'm just thinking, this is the way I'm thinking, and maybe, maybe there's a better way to do it, but I'm thinking, let's just take all the rest of the songs now, and then find out how many permutations there are uh, for those ones. 
Okay, so I don't know what question we're on here. I'm kind of jumping ahead, I guess. Oops, that's not the one I want to show you yet. That's coming later. Where's our 4.7? Here it is. Okay, so where are we? Okay, how many ways can they arrange the remaining songs around their heads? Okay, so that's, that's what I was getting to there. We have 15, three are already placed. We have 12 left, and the order does matter. So 12, pick what? 12, pick 12, right? We have 12 songs. We need to pick 12 of them because we need to play them all. If there was only five spots left and they had 12 to choose from, you could do 12, choose five or something. But they want to play all those 12. So it's going to be 12, pick 12. Does that make sense? So this right here is 12, pick 12. That's what that whole thing is. So we've kind of got 2 times 12, pick 12, times 1, times 1. That's what it kind of looks like right there. So what is that? What is that number? 958 million. Uh, oh, 3,200, is that what you said? Oh, sorry, no, I meant to put 12 there. Sorry, that's my mistake. Yes, it should be 12. I did not mean to do that. So it, this is what you got, though, this number? Yes, you're absolutely right. So it's 2 times 12, pick 12. Sorry, if I said 2, I apologize. Uh, yeah, okay. So I was just trying to copy this up here, I guess. All right, so are we at the end of that question? Is that kind of all we need to consider here? Write an expression that represents blah, 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 blah. Evaluate your expression. Okay, that's it, right? That's it. So that's the way we want to tackle that kind of question. And if you did something like this, that's great. If you did, um, uh, let's see, uh, you know, there, if, you, if you said, okay, I've got two songs and I want to, uh, now I, I, did, I did say choose there, but really the order matters. So this would be a two pick two here, okay? Um, or a two choose one, but two pick two for the order. Um, and this one would be a one pick one. And this one would be a one pick one as well. So I think that's, um, that's another way you could write that. Uh, but again, I like combining the fundamental accounting principle when I can because it just makes more sense. So you don't have to pick, choose, pick, choose. You don't have to get involved in that either. Questions? Yeah? You have a question? You said the front one is two, pick two. Yep. So I, I believe, like I said, if you want to use the, the permutations there, you could go two, pick uh, two times and then you could do your 12 pick 12 and then you could do uh, for that middle position it's one pick one really and then times this last position is one pick one isn't it two pick one if even though the answer is uh two pick yes this one actually would be two pick one yeah two pick one you have two and you need to pick one for that position thank you yeah, either way it equals two, but yeah, you're right. No, it is pick one. Okay, so you could do that too, and I think that's uh, that's the same answer there, right? So you could use yeah, you could use that as well. Any other questions? Okay, let's move on to example uh, example one. I think in your textbook here, I want to take a look at. Okay. So <clears throat> example one says, says this, a piano teacher and her students are having a group photograph taken. There are three boys and five girls. The photographer wants the boys to sit together and the girls to sit together for one of the poses. So how many different ways can the students and the teacher sit in a row of nine chairs for this pose? Okay, so we are going to have to uh, figure out arrangements for the boys, but they have to be in a group, right? Uh, arrangements for the girls, but they have to be in a group, and the one teacher uh, is going to be in there somewhere as well. Now, they don't say that the teacher has to sit in the first spot, so the teacher really could be in any of the, of the spots, in front of the boys and girls, in between the boys and girls, or at the other end of the boys and girls. So we have to consider that as well. So again, this is a, this is a bit of a combination. Um, there's a combining of different methods here. So here's Yvette's solution. Let's just take a look at that from the textbook here. So order does matter, since sitting in different orders creates different arrangements, so we have to use permutations. Now, uh, for the boys, there's three boys, and um, she used uh, factorial. Now, would, this, it, would it be also okay to, to write three pick three? That's my question to you. Is three factorial and three pick three going to be the same? 
Okay, you want to check that in your calculators? Okay, so if you want to use factorial, here's another thing you could realize that, hey, we've got three different people. Uh, the order that they can be arranged would be three factorial. No problem. So we've got one teacher, three factorial boys, and five factorial girls. Okay? Yes? Yes, if you're doing two pick two or ten pick ten, it's the same as the factorial. You bet. Should be. Okay? All right, so is everyone following me here so far? Different arrangements? Now, they, those three groups, as we said, the teacher could be at the front and then the boys and the girls. We could also have the teacher at the front and then the girls and then the boys. We could also have the teacher in the middle, boys, girls, teacher in the middle, girls, boys, and so on. And so that's, that's another three factorial ways that these three groups could be arranged. So again, it gets a little, it gets a little complicated, but if you think about you know, all those different um, types of arrangements, so that's kind of the way they, they mentioned it here. So it could be teacher, boy, girl, teacher, girl, boy, and so on. So that's three factorial. So bottom line is here, we would have one way the teacher could be arranged, three factorial ways for the boys, five factorial ways for the girls, and then another three factorial ways that all of those three groups could be arranged somehow, right? So you multiply all those together, 4,320. Okay? Any questions? Okay, uh, I tell you what, let's see. Um, why don't you take a look at the your turn? I want you to try the your turn uh, on your own. Just take a few minutes to, to do the your turn on your own. Give that a try. All right, so here's my solution. Um, like I say, I, I showed this a little bit funny here, but um, okay, so th there's, there's a definite students on the left and on the right, at the, uh, the very ends, right? So this person has to be here. This person has to be here. So that's only one choice for this first spot, one choice for the last, one teacher for the middle. So that's one, one, and one. The rest of the students, okay, that would filter through there would be the remaining six, and order does matter. So we'll do six pick six or six factorial, and uh, there you go. You should have 720. How many got 720 for an answer there? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Good job. Good job. Nice work. Okay. All right, let's head back there. Let's, let's take a look at example two. Okay, so solving a combination problem involving multiple choices. So let's just take a look at this here. Combination problems are common in computer science. How many of you are in computer science? Anybody? Okay, handful of you. Suppose that there's a set of 10 different data items represented by A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J to be placed into four different memory cells in a computer. All right, so if, if you're not computer people, this, this, some of this may be a little bit uh, out of your uh, comfort zone, but let's, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty straightforward. Only three data items are to be placed in the first cell, okay? So any three of the 10. Four data items uh, can be in the second cell, and two data items in the third cell, and one data item in the final cell. How many ways can the 10 data items be placed in the four memory cells? So. Um, really, we're, we're, not, we're not talking about a specific order here. We're just talking about groups of data items. So that's why we're looking at, in this case, this would be uh, a combination. And they mentioned it's a combination problem. But um, any three in any, any order. If the order doesn't matter, we're talking about combinations. So it says here that the, um, uh, sorry, where is it? The first data cell, three items can be placed. So we've got 10, and we want to choose three. Right? Remember, this is notation for ch 10, choose 3. In the next data cell, we can put 4 data items there. Now, keep in mind that 3 are gone. So that's why we only have 7 to choose from. So 7, choose 4 okay, for the second cell. And then the third one, we have uh, uh, 3 items. So we can, 3 items left, and we can choose 2 of them. And then the final one is only one would be left, so one choose one. Okay? So when order doesn't matter, you use combinations. And, uh, of course, all of this has to happen at once, so you multiply everything. Okay? So multiply the number of combinations for the first cell times the number of combinations you found for the second and so on. And this should be your answer for this question. Okay? So very similar to other questions. Just pay attention to when order matters and when order doesn't matter. Okay?
Questions on that one? Okay. So I think we'll do, let's do one more example here uh, from this book here, from the textbook here. And this is solving a combination problem involving cases. Now, this is where we get um, the different cases involved are involved when we have questions that are or questions or something like this that we'll read here. I'll just read it and I'll explain. So how many different five card hands that contain at most one black card can be dealt to one person from a standard deck of playing cards? So when you hear wording like this, especially with playing cards, now some of you may be familiar with playing cards, some of you may not, uh, there are a few basic things you need to know about playing cards. There are four suits. The suits would be the four types of cards, so hearts, spades, clubs, and diamonds, okay? So there's four types. Two of them are red and two of them are black. And there are um, 13 cards in each suit, 52 in the total deck, okay? So many of you know that, some of you don't. But we, in this question, it says at most one black card. So you could have four red cards and one black card, or you could have all five black cards. It says at most. So that's where the cases come in. So you want to find out how many ways could I have four red ones and one black card, and how many ways could I have all four or all five red cards, you see? So that's where you have to use the different cases. If it said at most two, well then you'd have to consider none, consider one, and consider two. And those would be or situations. So in this case, what are the chances of getting, or not chances, but how many different hands could we make with five cards or with four cards and one black, or red and one black, I meant. Okay, cases. So case one, if we have exactly one black card and four red cards, the other case, zero black and five red. So how do we figure that out? Well, to choose exactly one black card, because it doesn't matter the order, the order doesn't matter, it's just hands, and you know in a, in a hand you can shuffle around your cards, no big deal. So order doesn't matter. Um, we have 26 red cards, and we would choose one of them. We would multiply that, for case one, by 26, uh, sorry, 26 black, choose one. This is 26 red, choose the remaining four. You see that? And because they're all in one hand, we multiply them together. And that's case one. So that would be the number of combinations for case one. For case two, if we had zero black cards, well, you have 26 and you choose zero. And we have 26 red cards and we choose five. So this is case two. Now, here's the key. In these or questions, you do not multiply those two uh, number of cases. You add them, okay? So when, the, when you have cases, you add the possibilities for each case. Always add. Don't multiply the numbers for each case, okay? And so in that case, we have this number that comes from the first type of hand, and this number that comes from the second type of hand, and you add them together. Okay? So cases are the OR types. Cases, we add the numbers of each case together, not multiply. Questions? Um, hopefully there's a your, yeah, there's a your turn here I want you to take a look at. Okay, let's see. To, uh, solve the problem using above, using indirect reasoning. Okay, so to do this, you will need to consider the total number of five card hands as well as the number of five card hands that do not meet the condition. At most one black card. Okay, wow, this is the type of problem that I was <clears throat> wondering. Um, but I think what this, I think, again, I, I haven't looked too carefully at this, but I think what this question is asking you, think about it a different way. So if you, if you consider all of the cards with um, zero black cards, or the hands with zero black cards, and the number of hands with one black card, and you add those up, that's one way. Um, but they're, they're asking you to think about it the different way. What about the hands that don't meet the condition? So here's the thing. What about if you thought about the, um, uh, the total number of hands you could have in total, doesn't matter what's what, black, red, all black, all red, whatever, and then you subtracted maybe the numbers of cases that don't meet the condition. I think that's what they're going for. So for example, <laughs> find out how many cards you could get in the whole deck, doesn't matter, <coughs> right? 52 pick five, does it matter? 52 choose five, sorry, 52 choose five. That's a big number. But now let's subtract from that 
the, the hands that are counted in there that don't meet the criteria, and that would be uh, you know, hands that are all black hands, hands that have four black cards, hands that have three black cards, and hands that have two black cards. So that's the other way to think about it. Think of the total, and then subtract the ones that don't meet the conditions. That's, that's what this is saying. Okay? And sometimes that's easier. Sometimes that's a lot easier. Because what if the question said, how many uh, five card hands could you have that have at most four black cards? Well, you'd have to do, okay, let's do zero black cards, let's do one black card, let's do two black cards, let's do three black cards, let's do four black cards, let's add them all up. Or you could take all the possible combinations and minus the one with um, five black cards. Boom, done. You see how that's a little bit easier? Okay? All right? That, that you may need some time to sink in, but that's, that's what I guess what this one is. Uh, uh, challenging you to do. Okay, take a few minutes, read that in summary, and uh, then you can start working on your assignment. I'll grab that for you, okay? Take a few minutes, read the uh, in summary. Okay, so this is the final thing that I wanted to show you here. Uh, you may or may not like this, but if you're watching the video, you can pause this and look at it, whatever you want to do, but this is a flow chart of sort of how you might attack these types of problems very methodically. So how do you know if it's combination, permutation? How do you know if there's different cases, when to add, when to multiply, all that sort of stuff? So to start, if the question is asking you about the total number of arrangements, okay, that can be made, uh, if, if the order or the position matters, then obviously this is a permutation, right? So then you kind of go along this way. There are other questions that you can ask yourself. Are there identical objects, right? We know about that. If there are, you need to use this uh, formula right here that accounts for those repeating. If not, then you ask yourself, are all the objects used in each of the arrangement? And are you picking all of them or are you just picking some of them and so on? So this little flow chart here, um, you know, like I say, might be interesting to you uh, to help you decide what to do. And of course, uh, the combinations, you have to ask yourself, are there cases involved? So we need to add them or not and so on. Okay? so. That little flow chart, uh, I will make that available too if you want it. Uh, but the, again, the other thing is to uh, you can watch the video and pause it and look at that um, if you want as well. All right. Any questions? All right. So here's your uh, here's your assignment again there, and that's actually all the homework for chapter four there right there, and there's your assignment for chapter four point seven. I'll show you the questions from the textbook here uh, as well, in case you need that at home. Because some of you are in the habit of losing your textbook, right? I'm not going to mention any names here. All right. <laughs> so in case you need the, need the uh, textbook here, I'll roll through it here.